many years I've been a big fan of this next lady. Um, I've watched her on stage, I've watched her on films, I've watched her on screen on some of our most favourite TV shows. She's a comedian, she's a straight actress, she's a singer, she's had an amazing career and one that Wales is truly proud of. Um, I'm very, very excited to chat with the legend, really, the Welsh legend that is Di Botcher. This is Di Botcher chatting with me. Well, hello, Di. Hello, Lee. So where are you actually? Are you in Wales or are you in London? Where, where <clears throat> are you? I'm in Wales. I live yeah. in London. Yeah. I uh, came down on the Saturday night in March to spend a couple of days down here. Yeah. And got locked down here. Oh. So I'm um, in um, our house down in Wales. Right. But I haven't been back to my flat in London since March. And it was one of those times, you know, we were coming down for the weekend on the Saturday and we were getting the food out, you know, bring down milk so we could have a cup of tea in the morning. And I just said, oh, we do it every time. We bring down all the food from the fridge and we take it all back up again. I said, just leave it. So I've got a fridge full of food in my flat in South London. Oh, gosh. <laughs> well, it's fantastic to have you on the show. Thank you so much for doing it. I, I really appreciate it. And as you probably know, I've told you before, right? I was a fan of yours for long before I ever met you. Um, oh, bless you. No, it's true. It's absolutely true. But uh, I mean, for people watching the show now, do you want to tell them how you started off in, in acting? Or I mean, we know you know from just to let everybody know, obviously, we know you from films and TV and stage and everything else. So was it stage first for you or did you go into TV straight away? No, I always I always wanted to do theatre. I always wanted to do theatre and um, I didn't particularly think I'd be any good at television or anything like that. And I had a huge shock when I did do my first television, I, you know, because I thought, well, I can act, so that will be fine. And then, of course, you learn all about the other things about the continuity and... Yeah, uh, it's a totally different it's, world, isn't it? People don't realise how Totally different. different. And, and nobody had said anything. And I'd sort of done this scene, I think, where I was interviewing somebody and I was sitting at a desk. But I was doing all sorts, you know, I was picking up pens and things like that. And then, of course, the continuity lady came over and said, you picked up a pen when you said the word so-and-so. You moved it over to your left hand when you said the word so-and-so. I was like, what? <laughs> this is like three-dimensional chess now, you know. Yeah. One of the most iconic things we saw you in early on, obviously, was, was Twin Town. One of my favorite, yeah. probably everybody in Wales' favourite films. How did that come about and did you enjoy that? Oh gosh, I loved that. I was delighted. It all came around the time that a lot of us were doing Under Milk Wood at the National. Right. And uh, now I, I'd known Kevin Allen, the director, mm -hmm. because we were in the West Glamorgan uh, Youth Theatre together. And we were both in The Winter's Tale. There was lots of us and we were all doing uh, Under Milk Wood up at the National in 1995. And so he came to see it and uh, he knew, obviously he knew a lot of the actors in it, all well she's together. And then there was this talk about uh, doing this film and uh, I mean, uh, Rhys Evans was second voice in Under Milk Wood. And there was, yes, who obviously went on to brilliant things. Yeah. And um, so, uh, but I still had to audition for it. I remember going to his flat in West London and uh, having to audition. And, and we did many readings of it as well. I remember doing one reading. Uh, you know, an open reading to try and get money in. Yeah. And Sreese played one of the bent coppers. Ah, right. And yeah, there was a lot of us and we were in it, but we weren't necessarily in the parts that we filmed. Yeah. Got you. So. Got you. I mean, obviously there's talk of this, I, I spoke with Kevin about stuff as well, and this, the, the, the second film, you know, he's, he's, he's talking about that. But obviously, you know, your character's not there, is it? It's a shame. Blown up in blown up in the caravan, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> Unless she had like a twin sister or 
that's the way to go. No. Like, ghost scene. That, that's not going to happen. So, uh, yes, but I, I wish him well. And everybody is uh, dying for him to do another, you know, yeah. Twin Town so 2, good. as it's called. Yeah. The public will obviously know your face straight away from things like, uh, what, Little Britain? So that was great. And Britain, I I'd say, and, and Stella. I mean, that's, that's where your comedy skills really come into the fore, isn't it? I mean, you do so much. You do drama and comedy and music, musicals, everything. But Little Britain and Stella, you know, you play the amazing Auntie Brenda in that. Is that as much fun to do as it looks? Yeah, I mean, Little Britain was lovely. That was many years ago. And that, again, was just an audition that I had to go to through my agent, you know. Yeah. So it was quite a cold call and... I just met the, the the boys, Matt, Matt and David, and they were lovely. And it was it was coming from the uh, uh, radio series, and then they were going to go into television. And so I made that made that, and I only did a couple of scenes in the first series there. Um, and then I went to Denmark to live for six months to do Les Miserables. Wow. which was fantastic. I loved it. Uh, but things were sort of filtering through. This was a few years ago, wasn't it? But we didn't have smartphones then, you know, so it was more. But uh, things were filtering through, and my agent at the time said, this little Britain is huge. And I was like, is it? And, uh, yes, somebody sent me out um, a DVD of it, and a few of us got together to see what it was about because they'd heard. And we did see that it was something that was so different and so catchphrasey. It was like the fast show. It was the yeah, next totally. generation of the fast show. I enjoyed that. And I was lucky enough to be in all three series and to do um, a special disc as well, which we did for children in need. Yeah. So that was all lovely. Uh, and then Stella was more of... A comedy, full comedy role, yeah. you know, yeah. where you can't hide behind being a a straight role with a sort of sly bit of funniness in there. Yeah. You've just got to go right. This is a comic role, and I've got to go for it. You know. It seemed to me with Stella, they brought you in, and then that whole character heightened that because you wasn't in the first series of Stella, was you? No, like no. Series. They brought her in, you know, and that whole series for me was just lifted there because that character was just incredible. Really, really funny, I thought. A lovely jo joy to play, joy. I just sort of, I just, when I got the um, the words, the lines to read it, and I learnt it, and I thought, I treated the audition as if it was my first day of filming, you know, and I think yeah. that's the best way to go about auditions for me i just treat it like it's my job and i'm turning up and i'm going to take notes from the director but I'm, this is what i'm presenting you with really you touched there on the lamies i mean i know you've done other musicals as well um what, what have you done what, what what's the what's the biggest things you've done and what what's your favorite roles on stage in, in musicals i'm interested obviously in musicals. Yeah, I loved doing Les Mis as Madame Thénardier. I'd done a few West End shows. Uh, I'd done Cats. I was Grisabella in Cats many years ago. I didn't know that. Yeah, the one who sings Memory. Wow. Uh, I did that. I was in uh, Beauty and the Beast at the Dominion, a big, big show. I was yeah. Madame de la Grande Bouche, uh, otherwise known as The Wardrobe. Totally. Yeah, no jokes about wooden acting, please. <laughs> and I did uh, Chicago in the West End. I did, uh, you know, Mama Morton, When You're Good to Mama. Mm -hmm. So lovely, lovely songs. But the main bit of musical that I am most proud of, I suppose, is doing the Sondheim musicals. Big, uh, a big Sondheim fan. Yeah. And at the uh, National... I've done four Sondheim really? musicals. Oh, yeah, know. yeah. So that, so that's and and have managed to you know work with Stephen Sondheim as well. Right. So yeah, but yes. a, a, an amazing career, haven't you? I you know for some, just thinking of to work with Sondheim, do that much of shows and telly and films as well. 
I mean, it's a testament to your talent, but I mean, there's very few people I can think of in Wales, especially, that have got a career anything like that. I okay. think the <laughs> thing is, I, I mean, there are people who are excellent, you know, like I think, uh, you know, John Owen Jones, who's played the Phantom of the Opera and he's played yeah. Jean Valjean, and he's a fantastic actor, but he doesn't get any straight parts. He doesn't get a straight theatre role or be, and you can see why because he'd come on and people would go sing sing to us yeah yeah you know there's so that you've crossed over all those genres nobody wants to <laughs> I guess I just keep on singing but yes I so I'm very lucky I know loads and loads of people who are shall we say typecast right right because they're good at doing musicals they most probably have picked up an agent who yeah. is very good who specialises in musicals because that's his or her links. Yeah. And then that's all you're up for is musicals. So I don't know whether I was lucky to have an agent who wasn't particularly into musicals and so pushed me more television way, but I had already had enough experience to, uh, to get the musicals. It could be that. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, it's incredible. I mean, I was lucky enough to come and watch you recently in the National Theatre in Follies. And I've got to you know, you were amazing in that. You were, you know, you got the big Broadway baby song. And yeah. It was just incredible. A National Theatre Live. Yeah. So you know where you actually perform it, but the cameras come in as well mm. during a show and it is broadcast live to uh, cinemas all over the country, in fact, all over the world simultaneously. That was a bit of a nerve wracker, as you can imagine. Okay. That sort of feeling of just hearing the plinks of the opening number, of, of my number, and then just, right, here we go, here we go. I'm just a Broadway baby. And there was one part in the song where um, I, I was rock solid in that song, absolutely. And then I had a bit of a wobble, a literal wobble, because it was stepping off uh, a part of the stage because that was the revolve. Revolve uh -huh. was gonna start turning. And I, there was something, you know how you can build something up in your mind? Yeah. I didn't like that bit. I just didn't like it. Once I got over that, I was free. And I remember then taking that step, being on firm ground, and then going, right, now I can enjoy this. I'm sure, I'm sure I can do this. And yeah, yeah, and did it then. And you did that then to all those people across the world. That's incredible, isn't it? And I got messages, I mean, that's not so wonderful about uh, social media and everything, you know. I got messages from people I didn't know they were, just sort of saying, so I, and telling me where they were, you know. Yeah. I was oh, in Norwich, so I was in Exeter, I was in, the, and just telling me, I was like, wow! Yeah, <laughs> lovely. Oh, but nerve-wracking as well, I mean, I don't know about you with nerves. Do you suffer with... You don't remember, do you? Yeah, I pace a lot. I pace about a mile. If it's a new show, for the first couple of shows, I pace backstage 
or wherever it is, if it's outside, back and forth. I, I, I make a, a trough in the floor, I, I pace so much. But then once I'm out there, hopefully it's okay. That's brilliant. But if you know that though, <clears throat> if you've had years and years of going, I'm worried, I'm worried, I'm worried, but once I'm out there, I'm okay. Yeah. Why yeah. can't you just get away with the worried pacing and just go, <laughs> once I'm out there, I'll be okay? Yeah, no, to be honest, I think... Or do you think, think that it's too much entrenched now? Yeah, I think, I think as I'm getting older, I am pacing less. But uh, it's about confidence in yourself, isn't it? And, and, and the peace and the expectation of what's out there and what's expected and everything else, you know. But I've never had to do a national theatre life. So, I, you know, I, I'm sure... Well, perhaps... Perhaps one day you will, and oh my gosh, <laughs> I, think, I think I'm that boat's gone. I think, but hey. and, well, this, and, and when we were backstage, and the overture started up, that wonderful, easy overture started up, yeah. and we were backstage, and we were all sort of a, a lovely company anyway. But it was like we were going to go to a funeral. We were sort of more or less going around and just nodding to each other <laughs> silently because we knew. We were going <laughs> to do this. Yeah, yes. But uh, what a fantastic feeling when I'd done it anyway. Oh, yeah. Incredible, incredible. And I was lucky enough to be there and watch you do that. It was, it was just brilliant. We had a drink in the backstage bar afterwards, we? Didn't did. we? we had a drink. And I was, I was going to ask you actually about, you know, there were some fantastic actors and everything in that, you know, there was a big cast. There were some, there were some heavy hitters in that cast. You know, yeah. with Imelda and everybody else. But do you ever? I mean, you've worked with some big stars, really big stars. Do you ever get a little bit starstruck, or doesn't that sort of thing bother you at all? Uh, oh yes, of course, of course. Like I mean, yeah, I mean, Stephen Sondheim, for example. You know, I can't. Yeah. I don't sort of. I'm not going to say to you, oh yeah, me and Steve. You know. Uh, I was absolutely delighted every time he talked to me or uh, just he'd be next to me in the, the queue at the canteen, you know, at the cafeteria. Yeah. And I remember him saying to me, oh, I'm so sorry when you Brits got rid of pounds, shillings and pence, you know, old money. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, he, 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 that's the way his mind was. He must have been the only American who loved coming over to Britain to use that currency, yeah. which would have baffled everybody else, you know. Yeah. And uh, yes, and then he'd give notes and we'd have one-on-one -on -one sessions with him as well. So yeah, it was absolute joy. But uh, I was always very, very frightened. I would never presume to say I was a friend or anything. I was just, uh, you know, oh. absolutely in awe, really. Yeah. Well, he's, he's, yeah. he's the man and he's the master, isn't he? Yes, so yes. That that night, I don't you won't remember this, but we were leaving the bar and we were just going down the stairs of the, the bar at the National and Olivia Coleman was coming up the stairs and bumped into us basically. And, and she said she very politely said, Oh hello, how are you? And you were like, Hi love and I was like ah. and I was like oh. you know, Dido's everybody. Ah. <laughs> Oh, brilliant! Yeah, I, you yeah. know, I get a little bit starstruck, but obviously, you know everybody. You don't, you don't do that anymore. Oh, I do. Oh, come on now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I do. I do. There'd be loads of people that I'd be starstruck to meet. I mean, the dog whisperer. If I ever met the dog whisperer, Caesar Milan, I would be. He's huge, isn't he? I, it wasn't something I ever experienced. I didn't know this program at all, but I had some friends where I was living in. Um, Switzerland last year, the year before, and I had some friends who were going to see him live, and they'd never been so excited. They were like, "Oh, we're going to see!" Him. I was like, "Who is he? Who is this man? I don't know who he is." Yeah, no, I would, I would be overawed to meet him. I think, he, yeah. <laughs> not my world. Not my world. Okay, well, let's. We've got to ask you then. Um, moving on. I mean, today, these days, now, obviously, you've got, you've landed yourself a fantastic part in one of the biggest dramas in the country. Your, your yeah. Casualty. Yeah, it's the longest running medical series in the world, Casualty. Wow. So it's got to be doing something right, you know? It's got to be reinventing itself and keeping itself fresh. Ian, I thought it was you. You haven't had enough for one day. Uh, that one's an overdose. 35 minutes CPR, but no output. He's gone. 
Will you look after that one, please? And what have we got here? Unconscious male, late twenties. He's breathing, but he's taking a nasty bang to the head. What happened? What? Ross? Ross? Sweetheart? Are you okay? You know him. Come on, love. Jan? Yeah, he's my son. Ross, can you hear me? Ross? Ross? Of course, we're in a bit of difficulty at the t at the moment yeah. because it looks like we'll. It's very hard to start filming casualty of all the shows mm. uh, because of the because it's a medical drama, and uh, they they sort of saying you know you've got to sort of go near a patient basically. Yeah, you've got to be a bit more hands on. We've sort of said even, we've got mannequins. You could film somebody in a bed, get them out of the bed, replace it with a mannequin and put the camera on the, do on the doctor's face, you know. Yeah. Yeah, We've got prosthetics. Be... But that takes a lot more time, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Huge amount of time. So film is actually on stop now? It's on stop um, for various reasons. Well, nobody's filming, isn't it? People are starting to go back. Mm -hmm. Uh, but uh, but it looks like casualty is a very difficult one to get around social distancing. They've come up with measures for us, you know, we'll have to do our own hair and makeup. We'll have to um, just more or less self-isolate in dressing rooms, uh, not come out. You'll get a text message to tell you to go on, uh, on set. You bag up your own costume at the end and put it on a hook outside your dressing room at the end of the day. So it's a taking a uh, canteen won't be open, so take your own food in. So, which is fine, you know, as long as you know the rules, you do it. Yeah. But I think all these things take longer then because there's going to be less people around to help you and to keep keep the keep it all moving um, nicely. Yeah, exactly. but it's not going back at the minute. This is it? the thing. I think whatever <coughs> industry you're in now, we've all got to adapt to the to a new normal, haven't we? You know, we've all yeah. got to change. Um, I can't see theatres being open at all for, for a, a long time yet. And when they do, that's going to be another world again. Oh, gosh, alive. And it's so frightening, isn't it? You know, mm. and you know that when they do open up, everybody's going to have their eyes on them. Is there going to be a resurgence? Yeah. And who's going to be brave enough to be the ones who open it? And who's going to be brave enough to, in the audience to go along? Yeah, totally, totally. But there we are. It'll happen. It'll happen. Something will... will will change you know well I mean? the thing yeah I, I just want to say you know shakespeare isn't it you know the plagues would come along and yeah. all the theaters got closed down but it wasn't it, the end oh it'll come back it will come back we we'll, we've just got to uh, you know be one step in front and and get ready for things and uh, and, and and make a living in the meantime that's the thing for our industry is there's so many people not making a living at the moment and we've just got to try and work up new ways of doing it and getting on with things i guess very very hard very difficult yeah yeah if um if things were normal on casualty um is that the sort of thing i mean it's a long-running drama and you could probably be there as long as you like i was just wondering because you've gone all your life it seems to me you've been a proper job in actor and you've gone from job to job to is that something you'd want to do is stay there and and be there forever or would you want to keep going into different types of things I don't know. I mean, life's not normal. I love it there. I do love it. They're lovely people. There's um, different crews all the time, different casts come in. So that keeps it fresh as well. There's not a, there's not a feeling of, oh, this tired old thing. It's mm. a fresh, friendly, intelligent place to work. And I really am enjoying it there. I'd love a chance to get back there and do something, but uh, I haven't. Uh, I've done anything now. Same, same as a lot of people since since March now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, no, but it is lovely. It's a lovely job. It's something that came out of left field. Yeah. I was doing follies, and the then head of continuous drama came to see follies and thought that woman there. <laughs> with the Ethel Merman esque voice, I think I'd like her that, to be a part of it. Must have been the suit. That's what it was. It was that yeah. uh, commanding suit you wore. 
Yes, yes. Surprisingly, you know, wearing those glasses in Casualty as well that you had, and a cigar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, lo- I love that part, as you can tell. I'm going on about it. But thank what you. What we usually do you. on this show, Di, is I ask a guest 10 questions. Quick fire questions. It's an either or answer. And don't think about it. Just say the first thing that comes into your head. And then by the end of it, we might have a little bit of more of an insight as to the way you think about it. You up for that? That is fantastic. I'm going for it. I'm ready. Right. right. Nothing awful. Nothing awful. But I'm going to shout them out to you now, okay? Here we go. As quick as you can. Stage or screen? Stage. Comedy or drama? Drama. Matt Lucas or David Williams? Matt Lucas. Broadway Baby or West End Wendy? Broadway Baby. Dylan Thomas or Frank Vickery? Dylan Thomas. Quiet Night In or Big Night Out? Quiet Night In. Michael Sheen or Michael Ball? Michael Sheen. Swansea or Cardiff? Swansea. Holby or Ponteberry? Ponteberry. <laughs> a kettle or a kutch? Kutch, of course. Kutch. There you are, easy as that. Thank you very much. You. Oh, no, that was hard. I thought that was hard. There was, you know, you were sort of giving me, you know, it's a bit sly, isn't it? A little insight into the way you think. It's just an either or. It's good. It's good. Okay, Dave Botcher, tell me. Tell me a joke. Oh, oh gosh, like, uh, everything's about the, the science now. Have you noticed? Yeah. They, 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 we're being led by the science. Not by science, the science, which is ridiculous. We're following the science. So they changed that. So I was thinking about uh, a science joke, really, which would be nice. And I thought, shall I tell you a joke about sodium? Nah. <laughs> oh no, that's that's a clever one. That's a clever one. Fair play. I'd put a claim I'd put a disclaimer up on that one. This is what it means. Oh, fair play. You've got to have done chemistry O level to understand I like that this one. joke. I like that one, but that's great. Uh Di, mm-hmm. thank you so much for coming on the show. I hope you've um had a little bit of fun. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it's been lovely and Really, best of luck to you, Lee, and well done for doing this. And yeah, brilliant. As you said, we've got to find a new way through this. So I hope that you are one of the ones finding the way through for the rest of us. Ah, thank you very much. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Di Botcher. So long. Bye. Bye. Now, through lockdown, many of us artists have worked in ways we would never usually work video, online, digital. Uh, All these things are new, especially to me, but I know they are to some of my other friends as well. But some people have have made it work for them in amazing ways. Um, And they've put visual content out there for us to enjoy through lockdown. One such young man that's done that through lockdown, I want to hail as a rising star tonight, and that's Nathan Jones. Nathan Jones is a young man I've worked with many times as an MD, as a pianist, and as a choir master. Uh, he's got a fantastic choir of young people in RCT that uh, have, have enjoyed, that have sort of entertained audiences throughout Wales for the last couple of years. And on this next piece of work that I want to show you now, he utilises the choir and lots of his musician friends as well from RCT, some of them, uh, to bring this incredible piece of music to you. This is a medley of Bond themes, which I love. I love a bit of James Bond. So I wanted to show you this to show you the work that's been going on during lockdown by some of my mates. This, I'm, I've already name checked Nathan Jones. I'm gonna name check Rachel Stevens, Molly Monkton, Kat Southall, Megan Jones, Zoe Brooks, Andy Mulligan, Joseph Colbeck Jones, Liz Harwood, and of course, Nathan himself. As RCT residents that have put this bit of music together, I hope you're going to enjoy it. This is Nathan Jones's arrangement of the James Bond medley. <laughs>
expecting you, Mr. Bond. A digging his hole, all in the ground So big and sort of round it was and there was I Digging it deep, it was flat at the bottom And the sides were steep when along Hello, hello, <laughs> oh, David, uh, David Evans here I'm uh, Edith as, a, as, 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 as band I am And uh, I just want to say it, I'm, I'm very, very sorry about this I know a lot of you are looking forward to seeing Enid And what she does on these programmes now but uh, she's not. She's not with us this week. No, no. Um, the, the truth of it is, no. She's found lockdown very difficult. Very difficult because the woman can't stop talking. To be honest, she doesn't shut up. But I'm a quiet man, you know. And I'm, I'm not quite enough for around the house. So she's. Uh, she, she. She. She got a bit fed up. She did, and uh, she decided now to go and take a long visit to go and visit her sister, and they can talk to their heart's content down there, you know. So that's what's happened this week now, and uh, so I'm very sorry she won't be here. Uh, so if you have got any problems, I I don't I don't know you have to you have to sort them out yourself I think, but uh, uh, she, she, she she anyway she's she, she's not here. Or anyway I I I'm, I'm, I just thought I better tell you I'm in the garden I am I'm 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 just laying a little uh, p -p 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 patio uh, for myself for you know. So anyway I I I I see you again. Best of luck to all of you. Tala for now. Tala for now. All right. Tala. Happy days are here again, yet da 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 do 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 Callum Howells is a young actor and singer who hails from the Rhondda Valley in South Wales. He's been performing for, for many years, since he was about 12, and he's only 21 now. Uh, he's going to be a rising star, he certainly is, which is why we are, we are featuring him on tonight's show. He's just about to star in a Channel 4 major series for Russell T. Davis called The Boys. I just caught up with Callum, and here he is. Hello, Callum Howells, how are you? Hello, I'm very good, Lee. I'm very good. How are you? I'm all right. I'm, all, I'm glowing at the minute. I don't know what this light is. I look a bit... You are glowing. You look, like, you look like Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> are you going to stop doing that, that Sammy? <laughs> I don't know what's going on, actually, but uh, never mind. You look all right. Don't worry. You look like you could do the haircut, but apart from that... I do, I do, I need, I, well, my hairdresser, she's, I think she's in Aiden at the moment. She doesn't want to see me. Anyway, young man, were you here to talk about you because you are my this week's rising star <laughs> now we've been a little star for a long time haven't we we were so we've known that you were a little star for a long time oh, well i well i don't know I, I i i don't think of myself as a star i just think of myself as a little boy from tonnerville <laughs> but it's very nice of you to say that thank you Lee. so let me tell them, let's tell everybody to start with and where sort of so you, you've been singing for a long time haven't you yeah, I was singing first. I was, um, my mother, well, that's kind of how I sort of did, well, it's kind of started really. I mean, I think it's the same for all of us, isn't it? We all kind of sing um, as as youngsters and then our parents go, oh, look at his voice for you, look at their voice. And then my, I used to sing in the car and I think, you know, my mother, my parents tried me in like karate and I only did it for the gi. And they tried me swimming and I couldn't be asked because I used to get wrinkly fingers all the time. So um, I think they were like, oh, we'll try him in, try him in. we'll put him in a, in a local am drum. And believe it or not, so we, so you know, Neil Davis, who we all know, right. uh, Neil, Neil worked in the NHS and my mother worked in the NHS too. And my mother's. Oh, that Neil Davis. Okay. Yes, that I Neil, know. Okay. That Neil Davis. Yeah, yeah. Right. And my mother spoke to Neil Davis. She was like, right, my boy, my boy's a lovely singer. Where can I put him? And, uh, and they, my mother put me in uh, Arc Entertainment, which was down in Slapwood Vardra and was run by like uh, Wendy Gazard and and um, and all they they a lot. It's all down in Slapwood Vardra, and I did okay. that. And then yeah, that's how, that's kind of the, that was the first thing I ever did, really. Well, obviously, I remember a time after that, and you obviously singing, and when you went into Only Boys Allowed. Yeah. And yeah. then you did you did you do the Britain's Got Talent thing? I did yeah I did um I did BGT I uh I did I did it all actually I I wasn't in OBA from to, from the beginning Elliot my cousin was if he's listening and my and, son uh, was in it with Elliot you Tom was in it as well of course he bloody so, yeah, was yeah he Tom. did the Britain's Got Talent thing as well but I wasn't oh, sure if I you were there at that point you see I didn't know if you were too young 
those bus trips that we went up up to Birmingham <laughs> together. And that, dude, me, Tom, Elliot, and Reese Jones. Dude, the laughs we used to have, Lee. I'm telling you. And I was I was quite young then. I was only a little a young little nipper. I was. I was about. Been, yeah. 12, 12, 13. And you can imagine if I was bloody with Tom Gilbert and Elliot Owls and Reese Lane Jones. That's why I'm so bloody dirty minded now. What's your language now, young man? You've got to go to run the radio. I'm going to, bleep, I'm going to have to bleep you. I'm going to watch you now. And the bleep it out. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to show a little clip now, though, right, of when you went on a, a BBC talent show. Do you want to okay. tell people what all that was about? Well, <laughs> I was gonna say strap yourself in then, but basically it was uh, it was it was uh, basically I I was I was doing a show um uh, called uh, well I was about to do a show called She Loves Me and then my mother said oh look there's Gary Barlow wants to cast this band in a musical and uh, and there was this sort of get involved thing and my mother signed the form without even telling me next thing you know I was in the audition room auditioning for this TV show and then the kind of rest was history then Lee. Okay, so after that then, so basically you did that, but then you couldn't take it any further because of She Loves Me in the West End, yeah? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, so I, um, out of nowhere actually, a director that I worked with from MYMT when I did National Youth Music Theatre just emailed to say, oh, there's, produ there's production of She Loves Me, which is cast in at the Many Chocolate Factory by Matthew White. He wants someone who's young, uh, young authentically young and yeah, they, he just wants to see people. So Kate was like, you know, get in the room for it. Lucky, you know, thank God for Kate College if she's mm -hmm. listening to this. But she basically sort of went, you know, uh, audition for it. So I went in and auditioned and, and I did it in an American accent because, you know, we all, I think we all, we all have this thing where we think, oh, we need to do it in American or whatever or if we hear the cast recording or something. But then the yeah. director went, do it in your Welsh accent. And a Adrian Evans always takes the mic out of me for this, right? But... <laughs> You know what? It worked, and they cast me because of my because of my accent. You know, so it was really it was really um it was really fun. The did fun. You the most being, fun did you enjoy being in the well? Sort of. It's West End, really, isn't it? You know, it's just out in the chair. Kind of, yeah. yeah. I mean, the menu, they, they 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 everything transfers from there to the West End. And I think some people call it like the mini West End. You know, yeah, or the the fringe or whatever. But yeah, it was really fun and. The cast was amazing for the you know for a many chocolate factory production it was it was a beautiful cast full of really lovely people that were really kind to me oh fair play fair play so she loves me started i uh, did and then what then then you went off to drama school i Am did I, right? I went off, i went into hiding for three years <laughs> <laughs> um but well no i kind of didn't thanks to you were concerts lee because i did you were christmas tour you did you did. I'm yeah. gonna. I'm gonna. What we should do, actually, before you get too famous, that's never gonna happen. We should, <laughs> I've got you on now because I, I won't be able to afford you in a couple of years because we're gonna oh, we're gonna explain to people now in a minute oh, why why that's gonna be. But we should try actually and do a duet for this show because um, we've done we've good. done duets before, haven't we? Yeah, we have. Yeah, but we can't get my big band in my living room now, so we're going to have to do it with a backing track, I think. So we'll try. I saw you recently on a clip with a choir singing a lovely song. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, I recorded that song for my last series as well. So it's a song we both know. So we should try and do that one. We can do it. Let's collab. Um, you are. <laughs> Let's collab. Let's collab. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. So right. So we'll do that if we can. We'll, with the, the power of uh, of tech in lockdown, we'll get that sorted and we we'll play it at the end of the show. Okay. Amazing. Amazing. Okay. So next thing I want to ask you about really is is what's going on now. What what's what's happening with with your career now? So um well. I, I, I was in my last year of, well, about to enter my last year of drama school. Um, and it's worth saying that after She Loves Me, I, I signed to my current agent, um, who's right. been really supportive of me. Um, and, I, and, I, and, and I'm, I'm with my current agent, thanks to um, the lovely Caroline Sheen and Mike Gibson, if they are listening. Um, and basically, uh, Mike put in a good word for me. Um, and, and that kind of, they, I signed with them. And basically... Uh, during my, I was in my second year of drama school at the end and they sent me an email saying Russell T Davis is casting um, a brand new drama about the, the AIDS epidemic and, and uh, he, he want, he's, he's written a Welsh young boy um, in, uh, called Colin um, and you know uh, 
we're going to put you up for it. So I went in for it. Well, I, I self-taped for it originally, and then I met for it. And then the day after, the day after, I was in Trioki Comprehensive School visiting by my, 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 old, my old teacher. So my, ex, uh, my ex-head of sixth form, uh, Joanna Murray, I was up in the sixth form block. So random, but I was visiting them. And next thing you know, I get this phone call when I'm there. And it's in my, my phone's in my pocket. If I break... And then I, I answered the phone and, and it's Tom, my agent. He goes, Callum, are you, are, you, are you sitting down? I went, no, I'm not sitting down, but just tell me anyway. And he said, it's, this is the offer, Callum. You, you, you got the offer for Colin. And then, yeah, so then, so then I got cast and then, um, and then I filmed, I just finished filming the series now. And, um, well, it was due to come out in, in October, but it's, gonna, it's looking more like January now. That's amazing. That's though. You know, congratulations. Firstly, Thank I think you. it's I think it's probably the thing that's going to propel you to where you should be, really, which is in the Thank public eye in Britain, because it's really it's, kind. Of you. you know, you're a great little character. I, I love it. I love it. I think it's going to be. I love you, Lee. Oh, I know. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but what can you tell us about the actual show then? Anything uh, are you allowed? Well, I, I can tell you that um, it's centered around three three boys. Uh, and and basically, it follows their story of them moving to London um, at a time where it was a, it was a very scary time for a lot of people, um, but particularly uh, you know particularly this group of people. And basically, uh, things happen beyond their control, and uh, that's that's the story. It's the story of of of, of these boys, and it's called Boys. <laughs> I've I, I got it. I've got it. <laughs> boys, boys, boys. boys. Everyone, watch, everyone watching this should play a drinking game. Every time I say boys, they should take a shot. And you've got some pretty famous co stars in that as well. Well, yeah. Uh, well, yeah. I had, a, I had a great week um, with Neil Patrick Harris, and that was amazing. Um, and he, he is just the most amazing. Uh, hang man. on, hang on, hang on. Clang. No! <laughs> It's so. I feel like such a dickhead saying it, but I am. I feel exactly the same. I am like, did that really happen? It's like one of the things. It's one of those things. My parents came up to a day um, when on set, and I can't really say what we were filming, but we were filming something which was outside and it was huge. And you know, my parents were just as emotional as I was because they got here, and I was. I was. I remember that we were about to do a take of something, and my parents were across the road and I saw them pull up and I was like just about to do this take and I had to like I, t- I, t- I, t- I had to like swallow because I was so <laughs> emotional because in Italy you know when you when you the, your parents in Italy you, they have a they're big they're big you well know, I know your parents right and I know how proud your parents are of you so I can just imagine the way they feel their hearts must be like I mean, your father's chest is probably this big now I'd imagine <laughs> and when that show starts to air my god your whole, oh. your whole family is going to be walking up another one, right? <laughs> and why not? Why not, eh? Oh, yeah, bless them. Bless yeah. them. Thanks, you. Great. No, that's brilliant. No, you're doing really well, mate. So, um, we can't show any clips, sadly, of this because the show isn't going to air until... When did you say it's going to come on? Maybe January? Jan- Jan- yeah, yeah. Excellent. Channel 4. Uh, of course, it's going to be on Channel 4. But the thing is now, though, you're going to be one of these people now that's going to be really well recognized you know are you ready i don't know really i mean you know it's i feel like it's one of those things in a way you just sort of like it's i mean i wish i wish that it wasn't it wasn't a part of it because i you know i do and i don't because i i i i i, I love knowing people and i love be, making friends and, and socializing but you know it is it's just one of those things in it. I, I i'll never ever let it get to any any sort of ridiculous stage you know what i mean because i i, I you know i i'm a, you know it, that's the thing i love where i come from i love doing concerts with you i love singing and and i i want to do that forever really because i bloody love it you know no, and, oh, you don't you're not I, gonna come I, and do I, one of my concerts you're gonna be off doing fantastic i'll tell you what though this is what i meant to ask you actually have you heard you know that the show that you didn't do the the band to take that thing yeah. That's being made into a movie now. Now really? is the time, young man. You want to get on the phone to Gary Barlow again and say, give me a part Maybe. in the film. He won't bloody recognise me, though. He, he sacked me off. He didn't want to know me. <laughs> when I said, oh, I can't do it because I'm doing a musical, I'm sure he went, thank bloody God. <laughs> <laughs> 
your language for six o'clock on a Sunday night is terrible. I'm gonna tell I'm you so, off in my chat. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to everyone who just We bleach it all the way through this stuff. <laughs> okay. So what's next then, young man? After after um after boys comes out, are there plans yeah. or have you got your own plans for anything on the well, stage? Yeah, well, so I was meant to be doing, uh, right right now actually, um, I was meant to be doing a play called Romeo and Julie um, at the National, at the National Theatre. It was meant to be uh, at the National Theatre for, I think we were there for about two and a half months and we'd do a tour then. But that's, that's, not, that's not happening right now, but uh, the plans are to, for it to begin in, uh, in December or January, that's what, they, that's what they've said. So hopefully, um, fingers crossed, that everything will go as planned and, and um, I'll be, I'll be, you know, on stage again. Well, you hope so. We hope so. I mean, we all hope, don't we, Lee? You, you were hoping exactly the same thing, right? Absolutely. You know, I mean, we, I've spoken to about this with everybody that's been on the show, really, about theatres and the way it's going. It's a scary time, you know, but I think we can see, I mean, we're in week, what we know, 13, 14 of lockdown, I think, but we can see things relaxing quietly. So people are hoping we can go back to work maybe the end of the year. I don't know. Mm. We we'll see. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Okay, but that's fantastic. Well, thank you. I really, really appreciate you coming on. I really do. I know it's not a long interview because you Any timely. I love talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> but we, so we're going to do a little song. But before we do that, um, have you got a joke you can tell me? Knock, knock, knock. Who's there? Europe. Europe who? No, you are. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, welcome to class three infants again. Uh, well, thanks for that. <laughs> so the worst joke ever, but there I you go. I expected better of you, Callum Howard. I bet you did leave, but I'm not, <laughs> I'm not on form today. I'm not on form. Don't worry. Don't worry at all. No, I screw it. Thank you for coming on. I know, I know. And I'll tell you what you can do for me then, right? Seems as you can't tell jokes. You can do me one of your little dances that you do on your uh, on your Instagram thing. I will. Insta I Instagram, you do, don't you? Instagram, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'll, well, can I say here it, here it is now. <laughs> That's Callum Howard, everybody. That was, that was it. I mean... <laughs> Fantastic. That'll go well on radio. Yeah. <laughs> right, young man, thank you very much. Um, I just want to say congratulations again, really. I think you're doing sterling stuff. I'm really pleased you're getting some success. And I have got absolutely no doubt at all that you're going to get a lot more. I really am. I think you're a credit to the, the system you've come from, young man, and your oh, family and your I area. Well done. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I'm sending all my love to you and to everyone who's listening. And I hopefully I'll be back at singing and enjoying our time together soon. Brilliant. Thank you, mate. Lovely to see you. You too, Lee. Ta -ra, ta -ra, ta -ra. My thanks to Callum Hubbles there. Apologies if any swear words slip through. But uh, he is an amazing little character. And I know we're going to see a lot more of Callum on our screens and on our stages in the future. And that's the end of another show. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate everybody that watches the show. Uh, mostly this week, I want to thank the wonderful Die Botcher, the very funny Callum Howells, and to Nathan Jones and all his friends for putting together that fantastic Bond medley. I hope you're all well. I hope you're staying safe. I'm going to leave you now with a duet, that, as promised, with Callum and myself, singing a lovely song from Godspell called Beautiful City. Good night, everybody. <laughs>